My name is Spencer, I've got MS, and this video is about five MS signs. Now to uh, talk about the first one, I've gotta go outside um, because it's often triggered most when I get on my bicycle. Not exclusively, but often triggered by getting on my bike. And uh, before I talk about these signs, I should say these are not five signs that you have MS. Instead, what they are is uh, signs and indicators, and they've been used for a long time. Most of these were uh, discovered or found or codified or talked about by neurologists uh, for the first time in the 19th century. And while they often are indicators or could be indicators that you have MS, MS, they're also like totally indicators that you could have other neurological problems. So every one of them could be caused by something other than MS. That's why actual diagnosis of MS these days instead of in the 19th century. Uh, diagnosis these days is through those three things you, I'm sure you know about. Uh, MRI, which would show lesions on the spinal cord or brain, uh, persistent MS type symptoms, uh, some of which I might talk about today, and then also a lumbar puncture, uh, spinal tap, as it's sometimes called. <laughs> All right, so the first sign I wanna talk about is uh, called Le Hermit sign. Um, that's like the worst French pronunciation you could ever have. Uh, Le Hermit uh, was a uh, neurologist, like this kind of like one of those like founders of neurology dudes um, and is attributed with kind of like being the first person to name uh, multiple sclerosis. Anyway, he was a 19th century dude and uh, later in like the 19 teens, a couple other neurologists uh, defined this thing called Le Hermit sign. Um, and named it after him, since he was like, you know, one of those fathers of neurology. Anyway, the deal with that uh, sign is that it totally sucks. And uh, I don't have it going on right now, but I have had it in the past, kind of periodically. Um, that's because I've got lesions in my spinal cord. And anyway, it sucks. One of the triggers for me is riding a bike. And you'll just see, um, if I get on my bike, I'm in this kind of posture. And that is just exactly the kind of thing that can jack up your Le Hermit sign and get it going on. Um, it's typically like in a doctor's office, if you're talking to a neurologist, it's typically uh, diagnosed through flexion of the neck. So like at being asked to do this kind of thing or this kind of thing. And what you get is this completely craptastic uh, kind of electric shock feeling. Um, sometimes if I'm just riding my bike, I can drop like uh, one hand off the handlebar and kind of relax and it'll go away. So sometimes it's kind of mellow, um, other times it's not mellow at all. And uh, right now I don't have it at all, so that's good. Um, that's because in some people, and this is like from reading I've done and then also my experience, um, in some people, uh, Le Hermit sign can be kind of like exacerbated, you know, by like heat and stress or muscle tension or whatever, and it can really suck and then it can go away. Uh, it can also, and all these signs I'm talking about today, all these signs can also be treated. You know, there's like movement treatment and drugs and stuff like that. None of that um, have I done or I'm not advocating or promoting or anything. Anyway, a couple other things about La Hermit sign that you gotta know. Um, one is that it's totally common with people with MS, like really common, but it does not mean you have MS, like no way. Um, you can have La Hermit sign uh, if you have any kind of damage in your neck or spinal cord. Um, even like cancer patients who are getting radiated, like their nerves are getting cooked by radiation. Uh, those people will sometimes get Le, Le Hermit sign. Um, I was doing a little bit of research for this video and uh, if you huff nitrous oxide, you know, like laughing gas, like say you, you, you work at a dentist's office and you get into the gas, uh, you can have Le Hermit sign. So it's just like, it's one of those signs that shows up with all kinds of neurologic damage in that neck region, that kind of upper spinal cord region. Uh, it's just pretty commonly associated with MS because a lot of us have lesions right up in there. All right, the next sign I'm gonna talk about is the Babinski re reflex. And I'm just gonna sit down for this one because uh, when you're getting a test for the Babinski sign, or Babinski reflex, you're usually like sitting on the edge of the neurologist table and uh, the person, the dude or the woman who's your neurologist, they've got your shoe off, get both your feet, shoes off, and they're kind of messing with your feet. Here's the deal with the Babinski sign and it's just kind of interesting. Um, similarly, it's not 100% diagnosis for MS, no way. There's a bunch of other uh, uh, spinal cord damage, you know, like accidents, uh, 
uh, tumors, just all kinds of stuff, other diseases that can lead to you having a positive Babinski test. But anyway, here's how this thing works, and uh, it's funky. Basically, when babies are born, they have this innate reflex. And uh, the way it works is that you just kind of gently rub, gently uh, tickle or rub the bottom of the baby's foot. And we're gonna pretend like this is a foot. And uh, maybe I'll show you some video of this here. Gently go up, kind of rub up on the baby's foot. And it doesn't take much, just like a fingernail. And that baby's foot kind of goes like, the, the toes on the foot kind of go like this. Like the, the, the big toe comes up and the other one's kind of spread out. And it's subtle. Like it's not like really big. It's not like the baby's foot just goes like this, but just a little bit up. And by the time the baby is like two years old, that thing goes away. By the time babies are two years old, if they're healthy and, and, and everything, uh, if you do the same thing, the, the toes will actually go down a little bit. And so the same deal with adults, you know, like healthy, normal, adult, um, normal. Um, if you do the Babinski test on their foot, the neurologist uh, takes their tool and kind of rubs the bottom of your foot and it tickles. You're like, whew, and your toes go like that. Normal, awesome. If you uh, register positive for on the Babinski, uh, in other words, you're not on the normal range. You've got some damage in your spinal cord or somewhere in your in your um, in your spine, anywhere basically between your brain and your feet. What's going to happen is you'll act a little bit like that newborn infant. So your big toe will go up instead of down, and your other toes will kind of open up a little bit. So anyway, that's the Babinski test. Uh, similar to the uh, La Hermite sign, it's not a 100% indicator that you've got MS. There are other things that can cause it, but it's kind of part of the picture. And similarly, it was discovered in like the late 1800s, and you know, since then it's been used by neurologists to check us out. All right, so uh, next sign I want to talk about, and this one, um, uh, this one really just kind of sucks, and it is one that that I deal with quite a bit, and I think a lot of other people do. Um, it's called Uthoff's phenomenon. Um, again, I'm totally <laughs> mispronouncing that, but uh, Uthoff's phenomenon or Uthoff sign, and uh, basically what people call this is just heat uh, sensitivity or heat hypersensitivity. Uh, Uthoff, uh, again, Wilhelm Uthoff. He was a German neurologist dude, uh, 18 late 1800s, and he described this uh, phenomenon, which is basically that uh, people with MS can't handle the heat. So if it heats up, your neurologic system just gets kind of overloaded and all of your symptoms get worse. Even symptoms you don't have, like from previous exacerbations, will kick in when you're hot and overheated. Uh, similar to the other signs, this is not unique to MS. Hating the heat is not something people with MS have, you know, like um, full ownership over. Uh, you can ha you can suffer from Uthoff's phenomenon um, if you have other conditions going on with your neurologic system. In the research I was doing, it seems like it's not totally clear why this happens, but in the neuro with the neurologists I've talked to, um, there seems to be agreement, and it makes sense to me just basically that electrical system, like your neurologic system is, electrical systems perform better when they're cool. Um, if you heat them up, you know, circuit boards or whatever, they just don't perform as effectively. Uh, the weird thing about that is that if you're going from a cool body temperature to a hot one, it's really only a few degrees. You know, you might go like maybe 10 degrees or something. It's really not that huge of a difference in your body. Um, but anyway, it's enough to affect you and mess you up. Uh, I've posted other videos about Uthoff's phenomenon and like heat uh, sensitivity and I'll put a link up here uh, to a couple of those. Basically, you just got to get some good methods for getting cool before you get into the heat and uh, dealing with the heat when you're in it. Um, right now it's a cool day and I don't have to worry about it at all, but even when it's cold, um, like below zero, if I wear too many jackets, um, you know, it's like I'm too insulated and I'm, and I'm out like working or walking or whatever, it can kick in. So you gotta definitely uh, watch the heat if you have MS and I'm sure other people also who suffer from uh, Uthoff's phenomenon um, have the same problems. Okay, so I'm out in my yard and uh, I've been watching my dogs and I think they just discovered that there's like water here in this tractor tire. Um, and they're drinking it. It's probably gross, but they're drinking it. The sign I'm going to talk about is called Clonus. 
and uh, it also totally sucks. And um, I, I haven't been uh, having the problems with Clonus lately, but uh, I've gone through some phases where it's been just aggravating and awful. Uh, so anyway, I, let me just describe it. Um, simply put, uh, Clonus is a um, kind of like a spasticity of the muscles, and it's typically in the knee and the ankle area, so like in the lower leg. And a test for clonus is pretty simple. A neurologist will um, uh, push up on your foot, uh, kind of like hold your lower leg, push up on your foot, and if your foot starts bouncing, it just keeps on going, you've got clonus. Uh, similar to the other uh, signs I'm talking about, all five of these guys, uh, uh, people with MS do not have a corner on the clonus market. Um, other people suffer from clonus if you've had a stroke or spinal cord injury or all kinds of things. Again, it's kind of about disrupting the signals between the uh, brain and the feet. And uh, you know, if that gets disrupted, uh, it happens in MS quite a bit, but if it gets disrupted for some other reason, you'll suffer from clonus. Some people's clonus is like really bad, and you can check out some videos on YouTube. I mean, people just bouncing and they cannot stop. Um, others, and uh, this is the case for me, it would be, it, it'll sort of like kick in at certain times, and it's kind of hard to relax, but if I can relax it, it will go away. So a uh, clonus is another one to sort of think about. It's a little bit interesting. And the deal with clonus is that it's really closely related to the last sign I'll talk about, which is Hoffman's sign. Uh, Hoffman's sign is uh, found in the hand. So clonus is down the legs, just like Babinski's down in the feet. Um, Hoffman's sign is actually in the hand. So it's kind of like a test for uh, damage higher up in the spinal cord. And uh, the deal with Hoffman sign is that it's a test of your fingers and I'll just show you basically what they do uh, with the Hoffman's test and it's just part of most neurological examinations um, the doctor will kind of hold your hand like this and hold your middle finger and then sort of flick it just give it a flick and if you do this if you do a little bit of this stuff you've got a little bit of that Hoffman sign going on um, this flicking will just kind of uh, cause this to happen. Um, I've never tested positive on a Hoffman sign. I always ask my neurologist, dude, did I test positive? And he's like, no, you don't have it. I don't have Babinski either. Uh, but if you flick here and you get a little bit of this stuff going on, you might have some of that damage up high uh, that indicates, again, MS lesions or something else, some other cause. Oh man, Millie's got a big piece of ice and she's gonna try to run with it. <laughs> Oh, it's taking you the ice. <laughs> Alright, well as my dogs uh, play with the ice, I'm going to sign out on this video. Uh, thanks for checking it out. Uh, subscribe to the channel if you don't already. On this channel, I just talk about stuff relating to MS. Uh, my own issues and problems and experiences. And I try to do a little bit of research like in this video just to uh, shed some light on issues that might be relevant to you. Uh, just a final note, again, these are five signs of MS. They're not indicators, they're not strictly symptoms. There are many other symptoms you may have if you have MS that I didn't talk about. All kinds of stuff. That is clearly for another video. All right, see you then.